All right, guys, welcome back to another fundamentals video. My name is Patrick, this is Steve, and we're gonna be covering lumbar uh, misalignments, motion palpation, and adjusting today. So without further ado, Steve's gonna go ahead and go over the misalignments and motion palpation for you guys. Okay, so with the lumbars, uh, the one thing that defines them is kind of the facet angles. So if we're looking at the facets, and if you have your own spine at home, you can kind of take a look at it that way. But the facets, the superior uh, facet of one lumbar and the inferior facet of the other lumbar are kind of facing each other. And they're almost perpendicular to this kind of plane right here. So in order for any type of misalignment or subluxation to occur, the, the, the bone needs to go posterior to kind of get past those facets before it can then do any type of rotation or any um, lateral wedging. Okay, so the first thing in every listing that we're going to see is posteriority. So we're going to list this P. Okay, so then if we have spinous rotation to the right, we're going to say it's PR. Okay, if we have spinous rotation to the left, it's going to be PL. So then the S and the I are going to come with what side the wedge is on. Okay, so the spinous rotation is either going to rotate to the superior side of the wedge, and if it does, then we're going to say it's uh, PRS or PLS. If, if the spinous rotates to the inferior side of the wedge, so the more closed side of the wedge, or the closed side of the, the, the disc, we're going to list it as an I. And in the case of the lumbars, we're going to do uh, I-M, and the M stands for mammillary, which is going to be the contact point. So with the lumbars, you're either going to contact the spinous process, or you're going to contact the mammillary process, okay? So now that we've gone over the listings, um, you can kind of refer back to the sheet, and we have drawn out all of the different types of possibilities of listings in the lumbars. That includes the, the special fifth lumbar listings that are a different case because of the fact that uh, the sacrum is such a strong base that we can do a little bit of uh, a few different things with the, with the fifth lumbar, and it'll, it'll present differently than any of the other uh, lumbar and any other vertebra. So when we're doing the palpation, um, we're also going to use the x-ray to kind of get the, the, uh, the listing, but the palpation is, is what we're going to use for right now. So we're going to do motion palpation. So the first thing I'm going to do is palpate for posteriority. So what I want to do is I want to put my fingers in the interspinous space uh, of, of, the spinous, of the lumbar that I'm testing, or that I'm checking, and I'm going to put it in the interspinous space of the one below. So in this case, I'm, let's say, palpating L3. So I'm gonna put my finger in the interspinous space of L3 and 4, and the interspinous space of L4 and 5. And then I'm just gonna extend the patient and flex the patient. So when I extend the patient, I wanna feel that the spinous processes are coming together, or we call it approximation. So you wanna feel that they're approximating. When you flex the patient, you wanna feel that they're, they're separating, so that they're flaring out. Also, the, you might feel the spinous process you want to feel it kind of tuck away. So if you feel it poking back at you, that might give you an indication that, okay, this is a posterior segment. So when we're doing rotation, and they're going to teach you different ways. In school, they're going to teach you to be on one side and then switch to the other side. Um, you can put both fingers on either side of the spinous. This is kind of just doctor preference. So me personally, I like to put my finger on the side that I'm testing. So if I'm checking for right rotation, I'm going to rotate the patient to the right, and I want to feel the spinous go to the left. So I'm going to put my finger here. As I rotate to the, to the right, I want to feel that spinous kick away over this way. Same thing for the other side. I'm going to feel um, on the left side, and when I turn the patient to the left, I want to feel that spinous go to the right. With lateral wedging, I do the same thing. So when I put my finger, when I'm checking right lateral bending, I put my finger on the right side, I laterally bend to the right, and I want to feel that spinous tuck up and away. So it's going to go kind of almost like an oblique direction, it's going to go this way. Same thing with the left side, I'm going to laterally flex to the left, and I want to feel it go up and away. Okay? So that's on the spine, so now let's get an actual patient. Okay, so now we're going to actually palpate a patient. So Patrick is going to be my patient, so we're going to first um, count, so let's say we're going to do an L4. So you can find this a uh, variety of ways. You can just kind of uh, extend the patient and feel for the spinous processes kind of tucking away 
So that L5 is going to be that first one that really kind of tucks away. So let's say here's L4. So I'm going to check for posteriority. So I'm going to go in the interspinal space of L4 and the interspinal space between L5 and S1, and I'm just going to extend it. So you need to make sure that you're the one doing this. If the patient tries to help you, all these muscles are going to start engaging and it's going to throw off your palpation. Okay? So, so I'm checking for posteriority. I want to feel that the spinous process of approximating. Okay? So the next thing I want to do is check for rotation. So I'm going to be on the right side and I'm going to rotate him to the right. So what I want to feel is that the spinous process is kicking away to the left. If I don't feel it kicking away to the left, that means it's stuck over here on the right side. So we're going to say PR. So for the left side, I'm going to put my finger on the left uh, aspect, uh, left side of the spinous process, and I'm going to rotate to the left. And I want to feel him kicking, kicking to the right. So if I don't feel the spinous process kicking to the right, I'm thinking it's stuck to the left, PL. So now for the wedge, I'm going to laterally flex. So when I laterally flex him to the right, I want to feel it going up and away. If I laterally flex him to the right and get stuck, then I'm thinking the wedge is on the right. Same thing with the left side. I want to put my finger on the left side of the spinous, and I want to laterally flex him to the left. It should kick up, it should go up and away to the right. If, it, if he's stuck more to one side or the other side, then I'm thinking maybe he has a wedge on the side that he's stuck. Okay? For rotation, you can also look at the paraspinal musculature. So typically, the side that is going to be a little more elevated, so if you feel maybe a more elevation to one side or the other, that's going to be the transverse process sticking out. Okay, so you're going to think, or the mammillary process as well. So you're thinking that's the side of body rotation because the transverse process is kind of poking out on this side and the mammillary process is poking out on that side. So if I had, for example, let's say I felt kind of like a little nodule or maybe elevation of musculature on the left side, I'm going to be thinking that the body is to the left, which means the spinous is rotated to the right. Okay? So we drew kind of a little schematic, and in the, in the sheet that we have online on, on Instagram, um, everything is drawn out, every different type of listing. But for example, this is just the R's. So if we're looking at, so when we're looking for posteriority, we're going to look at the lateral film. Okay, so as we can see here, the, 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 um, the disc space in the posterior aspect of the, of the vertebra is, is thinner, and we have a wedge in the anterior aspect. So now we're thinking that the vertebrae has dropped posterior and a little bit of inferiority, okay? So then when we go to the AMP film, so we've already listed the vertebrae as P, okay? So now we're going to assume that these are all P. So let's say this is L4 and L5, okay? So as you can see, we see that the spinous process is rotated to the right a little more than the spinous process of the vertebrae below. But the thing is with spinous processes is that they're typically malformed or they could be malformed. So what we want to do is kind of measure the distance between the spinous process and uh, the pedicle shadows. We don't have the pedicle shadows here, but it will kind of be right here. So if we see that the distance between um, either the spinous and the end of the body or the spinous and the pedicle shadow is shorter, we think it gets rotated to that side, okay? So for a PRS, we see that the wedge is on the superior side and it's on the right side. The spinous process is also rotated to the right side. So we're saying PRS, so spinous rotation is on the side of the superior side of the wedge. And with a PRI-M, now the inferior side of the wedge is on the right, and the spinous rotation is to the right. So now we're going to list it as PRI-M, and we say M for mammillary process. So you're going to contact here on the left side. So when we see a dash, and this goes for any vertebrae, not just the lumbars, you're going to, always going to contact the opposite side. Okay? We never want to thrust into the concavity. If we thrust from this direction, we're going to make this wedge worse. You're going to make the patient worse. So we contact the opposite side. In this case, we're going to torque down that way to close this wedge, and we're going to thrust from left to right that way we don't make this any worse. So we first describe which side the spine is rotated to. Then we will describe if that is the superior side of the wedge 
or the inferior side of the wedge. This is gonna be the same for PL listings as it is for these PR listings. All right guys, so moving right along, we're gonna show you some uh, corrections for these misalignments we just described. First, we'll show you on the drive spine and uh, then we'll, we'll give you some tips about the setup itself and then we'll show you on a patient right after. So first thing you wanna consider when you're delivering these um, corrections is the anatomy of, of what you are correcting. So as Steve mentioned earlier, you have those, those facets. No matter what the listing is, you're gonna to have to lift inferior to superior with your correction. In addition to that, the lumbar spine should have a lordosis to it. So when you're looking from the lateral that way, we're talking about that curve. So when you lift I to S and you're setting it from posterior to anterior, I to S, P to A, you have to go through that disc plane line. So if we're talking about, here's your fifth, fourth, third, second, first lumbar, that disc plane line is looking a lot more on that angle compared to when we're talking about L4 or L5, that angle is a little bit further down that way. So when our patient is lying on their side and we're set up to deliver that correction, when we're on an upper lumbar, our elbow can be more, our elbow will be more inferior than our contact point, so that our forearm is parallel to that disc plane line. With that same thought in mind, if I'm set up on a lower lumbar in L5, I have to get my forearm parallel with that disc plane line again. So I'm gonna have to get my elbow further out so that it's more superior than my contact point. Regardless of whether you're in the lower lumbars or the upper lumbars, you still have to be lifting I to S and thrusting P to A through that disc plane line. But just remember that elbow has to make your forearm parallel with that lumbar lordosis. Uh, with that said, on the dry spine real quick, we will uh, we'll go through the steps in the setup. The first thing you wanna do is your tissue pull. Remember that tissue pull is very important. It's the first part of your adjustment. It gets you about halfway there. So with your superior hand, you're gonna grab the tissue. So we're, we're gonna be uh, correcting, in this case, um, a P-L. So the spinous has rotated up towards me. So we're gonna put the right side of the patient down, the spinous is looking up towards me. Your tissue pull is gonna go in the same direction as that line of correction. You're gonna grab the tissue that's on that side closer to you and drag it across the spinous. Hold that tissue there and you're gonna follow it up with your contact point, which is the fleshy biceform. So drag the tissue across and then follow it in with your contact and hold it there once you have it. Very important not to lose that tissue pull throughout the rest of the setup. When you, just like we did with the pelvis, traction the shoulder up towards that top corner of the bench and then set your, your pelvis stabilization. With that said, a couple things I wanna cover before getting a real patient is uh, your foot placement for your stabilization. When I set up on, on my patient, I've taken my contact point with this inferior hand. I'm taking that shoulder stabilization with my superior hand. Now I'm ready to set my feet. I'm gonna set this, this front foot of mine. I'm gonna set it facing up towards the table, just like that. And now this back leg, when I swing it around to set my stabilization hip, I want this back foot to be pointing in the direction of my stabilization. My stabilization is going into the table just like that. You see I'm pushing the table away from me. If I turn that back foot of mine, if I turn it too far up this way, pointing in the same direction as the front foot, now I will be forcing my patient up the table that way, which I don't want. And if I point my back foot outwards, I'm going to be not having enough stabilization and I'm going to be hurting my back knee. So keep in mind, you want to keep that back foot facing in the direction of your stabilization, which should be into the table just like that. I should be moving the whole table away from me when I set my stabilization through the patient's pelvis. So my ASIS has to go on the back of the, the patient's greater trochanter, which would be right about here. When I set that stabilization, I want my stabilization to go 
through one acetabulum, out the other acetabulum, into the table. Imagine a line going just like that, and your stabilization is going Here we have Steve in our perfect patient placement. If you need to review that, uh, go look at some of our previous videos. We've already covered that, but it's essential to have him in the right position for everything else to go smoothly. So just as we mentioned on the dry spine, the first thing we're going to do in our setup is take that tissue pull across the spinous. So in this case, I'll be setting up on a, a, on a for just a straight P listing. You can kind of choose either side, whichever side is your preference. Um, this. For the way we have them set up here, this would be best for a PL, where the spinous is rotated to his left side, so his right side is down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tissue pull. First I have to palpate to find the spinous I wanna set up on. We'll set up right there on his L4. With my superior hand, I wanna tissue pull across that spinous. Now I'm exaggerating that distance just to show you on the camera. In reality, the tissue pull is pretty small, and I'm going to follow it up with my contact point, feeding in to that, that left side of his spinous process. Now, it's very important that I hold this contact point. While I'm setting everything else up, I don't want this hand to be sliding all around that tissue, moving all over his back. If I do that, then uh, I've lost that first part of my correction and my thrust will be going through all that tissue slide. So I have to take that tissue pull, set in the contact and hold it there. I can't lose that. From here, I'm ready to take his shoulder up to that top corner. Same thing as the tissue pull. Once I have that slack taken out, I don't want to lose it. Now I can roll him as a unit, both his upper body and lower body, rolling them towards me until I've rolled him to where I want him. Usually about 45 degrees of roll. I face that front foot towards the front of the table and I plant my ASIS right behind his greater trochanter, just like that. So remember, since I'm on a lower lumbar here, I need to get my elbow up so that I'm getting through that disc plane line. I also have to arch my low back so that I protect myself, protect my shoulder, keep the shoulder back, but the elbow up, standing up straight. Now my stabilization is going through his pelvis and I should be moving, pushing that table away from me. Remember the correction, I don't know if you can see on the camera there, but I'm lifting it I to S and P to A. And the, the two, the stabilization and the thrust should come together at that segment that we're trying to correct. So that was a PLS, or sorry, a PL for a lower lumbar. For an upper lumbar, everything is going to be the same. Just keep in mind, for a lower lumbar down here, I want my elbow to get to that disc plane line. For an upper lumbar, it'll look more like that because the disc plane line, because of that lordosis, is going back up that way a little bit more. Last thing to cover uh, for, our, for our listings that involve some uh, wedging, you want to include some torque that's gonna close the high side of the wedge always. So in this case, for a simple listing of PLS, the spine says rotate to the left up towards me, and the wedge is on that top side, also closer to me. So for that case, when I tissue pull away from me, just like I did with our PL, I also want to incorporate some torque going that way to close that wedge. So I'm gonna feed in and torque to close the wedge. And then everything else should end up looking the same. Remember that displane line. With that also in mind, for a complex listing, you want the side of the spinous process rotation to be the side down on the table. Can you tuck that head towards me? So, with the way Steve is set up here, this would be great for a PRI-M. So the spinous process has rotated down towards the table, but the wedge is still open closer to me. So in this case, I'm gonna be contacting the mammillary process on the high side or the side closer to me. What that would look like 
I'll take a tissue pull to my contact point, this time away from the spinous process, past that mammillary. I'm still going to incorporate torque to close that wedge. So I'm going to torque this way and my contact hand should finish just how it is now, parallel with his spine. I don't want to be across it, I want to be parallel to it. So what that should look like in total is this. Tissue pull past the mammillary, incorporate that torque, end up parallel to the spine, stabilize the shoulder, rotate the patient, stabilize the pelvis with your hip, and remember to get that elbow so you're going through that displane line and the correction should be I to S, P to A, through the displane line, just like that. Obviously, I'm not really gonna thrust on him, but that should be close to what it looks like. Uh, I hope you guys learned something with our video today. Make sure you guys practice a lot, and uh, we'll see you next time.